Oh, somebody just showed up. Gonna have to stick around a while. Talk to you later. <laughs> Hi, folks. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Dot, and this is the first day of August. It is Tuesday. Now, if you watch my show on a regular basis, you know what format we have here. We go hunting for stocks under five bucks that have potential to make us money. These are called hot penny stocks, and they're on every single market. Now, personally, I determine a hot penny stock by looking at the charts first. I'm looking for a chart that has heat, a lot of volume coming in, so I know people are paying attention to it, or a breakout setup. I know people are going to pay attention to it, or maybe it's just a long, continuous run and people won't stop paying attention to it. When I find a chart that has heat, then I go through all that paperwork looking for a match to set that chart on fire. And I've got a few of those to share with you today. But the first thing I want to do is catch you up on some bad news. I know a lot of people are invested in TBPMF, Tetro Biopharma, including me. This is a biotech company from Canada that primarily and from what I understand only works with cannabis. And they have a lot of different drugs, but the primary drug they were working with was Quicksleaf and Calms. These were pain relief drugs made with only three ingredients, CBD, THC, and terpenes. Terpenes are what we use to give smell and aroma to our beer and stuff like that. Well, they got exact dosages and found a pain relief that worked so well that you would inhale it through a vapor and in three minutes your pain was gone and it worked so well that it was working well with stage four cancer patients who have pain that comes on so quick medication can't work on it because it doesn't react fast enough this was working fast enough so they got a trial together called the reborn one 10 weeks that's all it was and i was excited when i heard about that so i got in and i got in heavy the company only needed 20 patients to test their drug against morphine. Cancer patient would come in, try morphine, the next day try the quick sleep and let us know which one worked better. I'm guessing the problem was that they needed stage four cancer patients who have three to four months to live. They didn't want to spend 10 weeks of that there in the trials, so they couldn't get enough patients. Well, everything just fell apart. The 10-week trial never ended. We never heard much about it. They started another one in Australia. We never heard anything about that one. They fell from the QB down to the pink, and now they have just voluntarily declared bankruptcy. But not because they want to, and this is the sad part. As I said, this is a Canadian company, and they have not been being traded in Canada for a while. Three months at least. I know that for a fact. And it has been being traded here in America, and all we've been doing is pushing the price down really bad. Well, they tell us here that on March 7th, 2023, the corporation announced that the Ontario Securities Commission rejected an application for a management cease trade order. The rejected MCTO prevented the corporation from negotiating any securities to continue to finance the corporation and even block Tetra from paying debt with their shares. Based on these events, the corporation has had no other choice but to make a voluntary assignment into bankruptcy. Sounds bad, folks, and I don't see any light at the end of this tunnel. I mean, a hero could come in and bring in a lot of money, but if it hasn't happened yet, I just don't think it is. There hasn't been a lot of love for any drugs being made with CBD, THC. Yeah, we have one drug uh, for epilepsy. That did do well. But for the most part, these drugs are cheap. This was going to be a very cheap drug. You could either get it from your pharmacy or a dispensary. It was going to be that cheap. You could buy it at a dispensary. But it is not going to come to the market. This pain relief is not going to be out for us to use, which really upsets me. But what really upsets me is I, I said I got into this a couple years ago. I have lost well over $10,000 on this company. I really, truly believed in it. So if you were invested, folks, I'm sorry. You're probably taking a big hit just like me. All right, enough of the bad news. Let's look at some hot stuff. I've got three charts. I got three stocks that I like. First ticker up for your consideration comes from the NASDAQ. This is T Stamp Inc., ticker IDAI. Now, this company's got a lot going for it. She is shining bright in my eyes. First off, she's got a brilliant chart. It is an eager, atypical breakout chart. 
she's already broke out through the 200 twice while it was falling. And of course she couldn't hold, but she showed her eagerness. Now that 200 is level and she's doing it again. And she just had news come out today, which really makes me think her revenues are about ready to explode. She is in a sector where money is no problem. IDAI, she finished the day at $1.45 with almost 75% gains today. We are looking at a stock that is taking off. As I said, she is on the NASDAQ. Now, they do give us a little description here, which is okay. You've probably had time to read already, but I prefer this one. They tell us here that Trust Stamp, the privacy first identity company, is a global provider of AI powered identity services for use in multiple sectors, including banking and finance, regulatory compliance, government, real estate, communications, and humanitarian services. Its technology empowers organizations with advanced biometric identity solutions that reduce fraud, protect personal data privacy, increase operational efficiency, and reach a broader base of users worldwide through its unique data transformation and comparison capabilities. And this is a big deal. The banks don't want to get ripped off. And this is going to allow them to make sure the person who is buying something from Walmarts is who they are. You may be on your phone, but they're going to be able to check your face, check your hand print, and all other things to make sure it is you. And this is being taken on by the financial institutions in a very big way, biometric security. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Boom! That's what I'm talking about. Wow. She jumped from just a little over a quarter million to over 22 million today. Outstanding. Share structure for IDAI. That's another shining point to this company. It's a low float. Even the outstanding share count is low. Anything under 10 million is considered a legitimate low float. Well, the outstanding share count's at 7.9. It looks like our float is 5.2 million. Well, even if it isn't 5.2 million, it can't be above 7.9, so we've got a low float. I'm loving that about this. Financials for the company. All right, their financials have been okay. There's nothing wrong with them. They're making money. They're making profit. Things are getting bigger and bigger. It's all looking good. On the quarterly, eh, they're bouncing around, but they're doing business as usual. But I see business is about ready to explode. Looking at those disclosures. Well, we do have an 8K about a month ago. This is about them changing their bylaws. Then we have a bunch of Form 4s in June. These are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's common stock. Now, we're particularly interested in them buying and selling. These are all purchases. These four A's are amended Form 4's. They made some minor mistakes back here and they've corrected them. No big deal. It is still all good news. Taking a look at the news. Now, I am most interested in what is happening right now because that's what's going to get the charts moving. But I want to give you a little insight to what the company's about. I've scrolled back to May. We've got three nice pieces of news here in May. Trust Stamp named 2023 Globe Award recipient. So they're getting recognition for what they do. And they are protecting it. Trust Stamp announces notice of allowance for new U.S. patent related to artificial intelligence-based biometric authentication technology. They're not just using AI, they're patenting it. Another of their patents is for the identity authentication via the control of third-party accounts. So when we're shopping on an app at Walmart's, we can still get verified using their technology. Then it looks like they had a public offering here at the beginning of June for $2.9 million. I don't know how many shares that is, and I don't know if it's complete yet. There's no news here that says they've closed it. Then we've got the big news today. They tell us here that Trust Stamp announces a 31% increase in its financial services customer base in the last six months. That really doesn't do justice to what they're saying. Trust Stamp, the privacy first identity company today provides an update regarding the adoption of its low code orchestration platform, which streamlines the delivery and implementation of the company's proven technologies. 
Now, it was just back in January of this year that they had made deals with 22 financial institutions with over $50 billion in assets and over 850 branches. Uh, they were at various stages of implementing the orchestration layer. Now they've added seven more institutions, including the U.S. arm of global institution with over 1,500 branches and assets in excess of $1.5 trillion. They have commenced the process of implementing the orchestration layer. So this is just a protocol of this technology that the banks just simply plug in. It's a very simple tool to use and they are going to be able to save money with it. Everybody is going to want something like this. I don't know how many companies are competing against this company, but this is a very hot product. The last thing they tell us down here is with our strategic pivot to focusing on software as a service product delivery, we are currently targeting a total of 45 to 50 financial institutions onboarded by the end of 2023 with significant long-term usage revenue starting in 2024. Just imagine, folks, we're just now starting to bring the banks in, all these financial institutions. Do you know we have over 5,000 different banks here in America? 5,000. I mean, that is way more than any other country. I don't mean branches. I mean individual different types of banks, over 5,000 of them. And they all have their own branches. So it is a huge market just here in America. Now, the chart is looking hot, like I said, and it is ready to run. Let me share this with you. Oh man, does that chart have a lot of eagerness. This is ticker ADAI T Stamp Inc. And we're gonna be doing all of our charting on my free trading platform. This is Think or Swim. I got it when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. You can too. And signing up, that's also free. So this is a six month, four hour view. As you can see, she has been in a downtrend all this time, but she's had some huge pops over that 200, even though it's been falling at a very steep incline. We had one here back in January. She jumped from about $3.30 up to $8.70. That is like 250% gains. Then she fell because it's way too steep. You just can't stand on that slippery slope. She came back underneath it, gave it another good shot here, jumping from about a dollar 80 up to eight dollars and 40 cents oh my god i don't know folks 400 500 percent gains there but again it was still too steep she fell back down underneath here gave it another attempt not with a lot of push but we did have a bounce here from dollar 70 up to three dollars that's a small bounce i'm liking this now she is trying it again and we are flat she has bounced all the way from the 50, doing absolutely nothing for 10 days. Once she hit this 50 and the news came out, she rocketed. She jumped here from 85 cents all the way up to $1.65. That is 100% gains. She's pulled back after market hours, but she is right there at the 200. Volume was intense today compared to everything before it. Oscillators are also intense. All of them are pushing up right now. Holy cow, RSI is up at 88. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Wow, look at that downhill trend, running hard and fast. And look, there it is, nice and flat. That's exactly what we want. She's broke out over that. She's gone very high. She has pulled back after market hours, and she's sitting on her nine-day SMA. Now, I always tell you, you've got to watch how far apart your SMAs get. This is getting to be a pretty big spread between the 10 and the 20. It's actually the 9, but I call it the 10. This could come down to the 20, so keep your eye on that. Osculators, oh my God, they are still on fire. Everything is ripping, folks. Five day, five minute. All right, that's an interesting chart, isn't it? Look how flat she was. She had a low here of 76 cents, which wasn't much different than any other day. Today, she had a little pop in the pre-market morning. She went sideways as soon as the bell came, and then she just launched, folks. She took off, starting off really at about 90 cents and going to $1.68. She fell back. Where was she going to stop? On a strong SMA. She bounced right on the 50. Did not come all the way down to the 200. She rolled that up. Had some problems here. 
I don't know what was going on, but she broke the 50, climbed back up, and she's testing at 50. And that's where the battle is right now, on the 50. But she's looking strong. Our oscillators <laughs> do not agree with me at this very moment. They say the aftermarket period has changed everything. But look, folks, pre-market could change it right back. I'm liking what I see here. I think there's a lot of potential for money. All those banks have lots of branches. All those branches have lots of customers. And I'm sure there's a piece rate, if you will. Every time it gets used, something gets paid to this company. So I like what we're looking at here. I think we are seeing it at a very good time just before it explodes. How you feel about looking at BBTT again? This is BTAB e-commerce group. This company just came on the market with this ticker June 5th, and the chart has been in an uptrend ever since then. We looked at it June 19th, and since we looked at it, she had a bounce up 150%, and right now she's sitting at 100% from the time we looked at it. Now, she just had news come out here recently, and it looks luscious to me. I think she's going to continue to grow. So BBTT finished today at 60 cents with just a little over 11% gains, 11.11. .11. She is on the pink tier, she's current, and she's got those two green ticks I'm always telling you to look for, a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. This is validated information. And when you're trading a pink, that's the least of what you're getting. So whenever you can get validated information, feel that you're ahead of the game. So what does BTAB e-commerce do? Well, they tell us here we are a next generation e-commerce company with significant social impact. We believe that every small business deserves an equal opportunity to succeed in the modern retail market, and we make it happen. We provide an e-commerce and social commerce solutions to help small businesses succeed in both the online and offline space. Our long-term plan is to become the world's largest product supplier for small businesses using e-commerce technology as a distribution tool. The way I see it, they are becoming a middleman with financial support. Rather than all these businesses having to go to the warehouses to buy their goods and come up with the money, this company is getting all the goods and they will give, it looks like credit basically to these companies and will help them to get what they need without having to put out all the money in the front door. So what was the relative volume around the company today? A little jump. We went from 23,000 to 37,000. I mean, that is over 50% jump. Let's not overlook that. Share structure for BBTT. Whoa, look at that. Quite surprising. We have an outstanding share count way up near 700 million. They tell us that our float is just over 15 million. Looks like the insiders own a ton of these shares, if these numbers are correct. Now, that's not a quote-unquote low float, but that's a low float. <laughs> Financials for BBTT. Well, she hasn't had anything annually, and on the quarterly, they just started making revenues first quarter of this year. Over a half a million dollars. We know it's thousands because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers down here and they're making profit. And the next financial is due right now, and I'm expecting that one to be bigger than this one. Looking at the disclosures for the company, we don't have anything here, all we've got is news, and there's only one news press we need to take a look at. This came out July 25th. Global e-commerce group, also known as BTAB, seeks new partnerships, giving struggling retailers an alternative to closure, to going out of business. BTAB is now providing a lifeline option to retailers facing closure through business collaborations that will provide these retailers access to a host of e-commerce services and supplies provided by the company and its affiliated companies, which currently are only accessible to those with significant market presence and massive revenue streams. BTAB has already created a global network and the company's attention is now focused on expanding its footprint around the globe. BTAB's proven e-commerce model will provide a viable alternative to closure for those companies struggling to remain profitable in the current economic climate. The CEO states, adding these struggling businesses to the BTAB network 
will accelerate the growth of the network as it continues to expand its reach into Asia, Europe, and the Americas. <laughs> the closure of long-standing retailers of any size, such as Bed Bath & Beyond and Sears, from multinationals to small independents, is always a loss to the economy. Local employment opportunities and shareholder profits, don't we know it? We emphatically believe that bringing struggling brands into the BTAB network will help many avoid closures. BTAB was founded in 2014 and it is an e-commerce company that operates through the subsidiaries in Australia and the Asian region as well as locations in the US and the UK. So they're trying to help a lot of small businesses that are struggling. Well, how many of those do you think there are? I mean, and there's not just small businesses struggling. Big businesses are struggling as well. And if they can help, I'm sure they will. So I think this is a big business opportunity because they're going to help other businesses. A business that helps business, that's probably going to be around for a while. And I am liking the chart since it hasn't drooped since she's come on the market. I think she's going to continue running. Not a lot to look at, but let's look at it anyways. Yeah, it's a simple chart. But it's oh so pleasing. This is BBTT BTAB e commerce. Now, this is a six month, four hour view, but it only goes back to June 5th. That's when this ticker got on the market. She was at a low of here, roughly five and a half cents. Now, she's been climbing ever since she's got here, but it was very slow at first. It wasn't until July 17th the fervor came into the picture. We looked at it July 19th. The price at that time was roughly 26 cents, and right now we're at 60 cents. So that is over 100% gains. But if you caught the bounce day, she got up to roughly 75 cents, you could have had 150%. Now, there's not a lot of extra volume to talk about, but that doesn't seem to hinder her at all. And her oscillators are a bit cool right now. Everything is just kind of churning down. It's not bad, but it's not good but I still think she's going to climb. Looking at that 20-day, one-hour view. So she was really flat until the 20th. She got up on top of that 20 and started to push up, got on her 9-day, hit a high, fell back to her 9, is bouncing off the 20, and that's where she's sitting right now. So she's between the 10 and the 20. She's not getting near that 50-day SMA, which is a good sign. Oscillators, they show a bit of recovery now. Everything is just starting to pinch up. Our MACD, our PPO, and our RSI is pushing up, and it's at 56 right now. Five-day, five-minute view. All right, she was here at the beginning of this at 57, so it's pretty much a straight line, isn't it? Straight across. She had some lows, she had some highs, and she's pretty much still right there. Uh, the oscillators are pretty planted right now. Not a lot happening on the chart, at least not down on these low time frames. On the four hour chart, she is looking very strong. She's had good news and we've got a financial coming out and we've got a decent float. Again, I'm gonna tell you to put BBTT on your watch list. I wasn't wrong the last time. This next stock we're taking a look at is kind of a pet project for me, if you will. This is GSE Systems ticker GVP. Now I found her by looking at the charts and it's the chart that's got me interested in this stock. She's got good things going on but she hasn't got a driving catalyst but the chart is something that I feel tells me it's going to run. You hear me talk about these big green spikes that I call directional intentional spikes. That's when the price is underneath the 200 and out of nowhere comes this huge spike that crushes the 200, goes way up and then comes right back down, right where it started, didn't lose any power. Well, I always consider those a, I am going to jump when I get the opportunity. I think of it as an absolute. Well, this stock has one and I wanted to share this with you because I think it's going to be a breakout and I want to look back to see if we were right. Well, <laughs> I just looked at the charts and she's doing it right now after market hours. So I think we are on target with this. GVP, she finished a day at 41 cents with just a little over 5% gains. She's a penny stock on the NASDAQ. 
and we've got no description here but you can normally find one in a press release they tell us here that GSC solutions proven by more than 50 years of experience in the nuclear power industry GSC knows what it takes to help customers deliver carbon free electricity safely and reliably today GSC Solutions leverages top talent, expertise, and technology to help energy facilities achieve next-level plant performance. GSC's Advanced Engineering and Workforce Solution Division offer highly specialized training, engineering design, program compliance, simulation, and technical staffing that reduce risk and optimize plant operations. With more than 1,100 installations and hundreds of customers in over 50 countries, GSE delivers operational excellence. That's all I can tell you. I don't know a whole lot more about this company. What was the relative volume around it today? Well, we had a little bump. She went from roughly 89,000 to 118,000 a day. Share structure for GVP. Well, I don't know what the float is, but our outstanding share count's way down at 23.5 million, so our float isn't going to be any higher than that. That's a very decent float. Financials for GSE Systems. Uh, looks like they've been falling over the last four years. 2019, they were at a high of 82 million. Don't forget those three zeros. Falling to 57, 55, 47. But we can say they've been staying in the profit. They're in the green, so things are looking good. Quarterly, well, not bad again. They are falling ever so slowly. It's a slippery slope right now, 12, 12, 11, 10, 8, 10, 8, just a little bit. They're maintaining. They're not looking bad. Looking at their disclosures, we got anything over here? We do have an 8K. Did I even look at this? <laughs> I can't remember. Departure of directors. I did, and I probably just jumped out just like that. We got a bunch of Form 4s here, and to be honest, I didn't even look at these. Form 4s, you remember, are when insiders buy or sell shares of the stock. Well, up here, it'll tell you who is doing the buying or selling. Over here, it'll tell you how they're related to the company. This is an officer. Vice President, GSC Workforce Solutions. And right down here, right in the center, you can get all your information. If it's red, it means they sold. If you're colorblind, the D means they disposed of them. If they acquired them, you'll get an A, and it'll be green. And if they bought or sold, you're going to have a price. They may acquire or dispose, and you'll see an amount here, but you'll see no price. Well, they didn't buy them. Something else. That's how they got them. So this was a small sale, 1,600 shares at 36 cents. So, you know, they didn't get very much for that. They're probably paying a bill or buying cigarettes or something like that. But you got a bunch of them here, so that would be worth checking into. And you do have an 8K. All right, we'll take a look at it since we're here. It is over a month ago. Entry into material definitive agreement. These are the ones I'm looking for. And real quickly, the first paragraph will normally tell you what's going on. June 23rd, the company entered into a securities purchase agreement with Lind Global. Uh, they have uh, up to $8 million they can borrow now. So that's not bad news. That's nice to know they got that going on. So you got a lot of good things to look at over here. Let's check out that news. Now, as I said, they don't have anything current going on right now. I mean, they have current news, just nothing today or yesterday. I am back here to May. The news here states that the company's engineering shows positive momentum with over 1 million in recent new nuclear program service and support wins. So they're making more money. Uh, July 10th. The company awarded up to $15 million to support nuclear power plant main control room modernization project. I read this. This is them coming into old nuclear plants and just redoing all the technical stuff. You know, all the computers and all that hardware stuff. They're coming in and doing that, which is a big improvement for these old plants. And then we had a piece of news on the 17th of July. The company wins a $1.5 million contract to provide engineering services and staffing support to U.S. uranium enrichment provider. My point, 
they're in a good sector. Nuclear energy, folks, is the cleanest energy we have right now. I think hydrogen would probably be cleaner. I think hydrogen is where we'll ultimately get to if we don't blow ourselves up first. But right now, nuclear is the cleanest and it gives us the most energy. Yes, there are dangers involved with it, but we've gotten good at taking care of it. We've had it around for a very, very long time. So they're in a strong sector. They're doing more and more and more business, and I think they're going to get more and more business. So I think this company's going to grow. And right now, the chart looks like it's ready to break out. Right now, the chart is already breaking out. So let's go take a look at that. You know, it's taken a long time to develop patience. And this just gave me what I wanted before I even had time to wait. This is GVP GSE Systems. That's a six-month, four-hour view. She had a high bubble back here in February of $1.16. Lots of volatility, lots of ups and downs, banging on top of a flat 200-day SMA. She could have easily run here, but she didn't. I don't know what happened here, but that is a bloody big fall. It brought her down under the 200, and she's never recovered. She has fallen all the way since then. But look, look at all of these huge directional intentional spikes. They are pushing towards oxygen. They're trying to get their face over that water line to breathe. I'm going to go up. I got to breathe. We have these over and over and over again, but this is the one that caught my attention right there. That one broke through. This is still too steep. It doesn't look steep on this stretched out form, but it's still too steep. It can't jump up there, but it's telling you, I'm going to go. This is my directional intentional spike. I break the ice. I wave my little flag up here and you know, I'm going to do it as soon as I get the first opportunity. Now, the only way I know this is going to work is if it comes right back to where it started. It can't go falling any deeper. It has to fall exactly where it is. Now, I don't know anybody else who teaches this, folks. This is just something I have seen through the years I've been trading over and over and over again. I look at a lot of charts. This is an indicator to me. When it doesn't go any deeper, up, back down, start to climb, first opportunity you get, you're going to run and break that 200. Now, of course, you're going to test it once you get up on top, but that's what happens and that's what's happening. You can see our volume has been increasing over the last four or five days, and our oscillators are looking good. PPO is pushing up. ADX, this is my trend continuation. As long as the line is straight, it means whatever trend is on the board from the time that line started is what the trend is doing. So this started when it started pushing up. As long as that line does not change directions, that means my trend is continuing. It is still climbing. As soon as that changes direction in any direction, up, down, sideways, it don't matter, that trend up here has stopped. It's not climbing anymore. It's a very simple oscillator, but boy, do I like it. Our MACD is kicking butt. Look at all these green bars accumulating. And we did have a pullback on the uh, RSI, but I think this is aftermarket. No. Well, we'll see. She is down to 61 right now, which is bearable. That's fine. Let's take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So there was my indicator spike. This is the one that says I'm going to climb. She fell back down, fell down to a 50. She did come underneath it, but that's okay as long as she returned to where I wanted. After that, she's going to roll around, probably go a little deeper so she can get up some steam. She's got to break through it, right? So it's like a cat pouncing doesn't just jump from where it's at. It crouches down and then jumps. So I always look for the crouch before the jump. Bam, there's another one. A crouch. Oh, she got up on top. She's rolled. She's testing it. She's now on top. She's got to jump on top a few times. She's doing that. Underneath you bang it. On top you bang it. Then you go. And that's what happened right here. You can see we had a nice push off yesterday. She started climbing on her nine day SMA, had a huge spike right there, going from uh, 38 cents up to 54 cents. That was pre market. But I do believe this is a NASDAQ stock. Yes, it is. So you can trade this pre market after market. And there are huge bounces in those zones. You just got to remember to trade change the period of time that you're trading. 
It's not a day trade. It's an extended period. So you got to have day plus extension or good till canceled plus extension. You don't have extension in there. They won't even see your order. She fell fast and furious though back to the bell coming back down here to 39 cents. She had a nice jump coming up here to 44 cents falling back again to 41 and look at our aftermarket. Look at that jump here after market. A lot of excitement. Oscillators don't show all that excitement, but they do show strength. Everything is showing strength. But right now, believe it or not, the RSI, which is your price line, is falling. That looks like it's climbing. But let's come down to the five day, five minute. That'll tell the tale. Ah, so she jumped and fell back. She is right there on the 50. She's bouncing on that 50, folks. That's her lifeline. Bing, bing. She came under it, but she came right back up. That's part of the test. Think of that as the magnet effect or even better, a rubber ball in water. It comes down and it's staying right up near the surface and then it comes back to the surface. That's what you see many times as part of a test, the rubber ball test. We got a new term. She jumped really nice here after market from 42 up to 48. She did fall back, but that was a nice bounce. You could have made profit on it if you were trading after market. Oscillators say she's taking a turn down just because of those last two bars. So <laughs> she's already broke out and I don't have a catalyst, but this is just a breakout. She hasn't started running yet. She is going to be testing this 200. I don't know that she's going to run folks, but I was right about the indicational bar. I think she could give us more. So go ahead. It isn't going to cost you anything. Put GVP on your watch list. You know what your watch list is. It's this thing over here. You scroll down to the bottom. Well, this is an A easy watch list. That's actually a scan that I made a watch list. But you can pull up any one of your watch list, folks. Scroll down to the bottom and type in that ticker. Can you see that? You can't even see that, can you? Doesn't matter. That's how you put it on your watch list. I don't mean put it in your mind. I don't mean write it on a piece of paper. Put it over here. So when you're trading, you have this open and you can see the volume right here. You can see the gains. Now, honestly, if you're looking for runners, you probably want to bring up volume at the top first, not the gainers. You want to see volume pick up before she takes off. You want to see that volume come in. Once you see that and you see which one's got the volume, oh my God, it's GVP. That's when you go looking. So put GVP on your watch list. Put all the stocks I showed you on your watch list. I think they're all valuable. And most of the stocks I show you folks, I am talking about short term runs. There are many stocks we look at that are good for long holds, but I'm trying to find day traders gains. So don't be thinking that if you get into this and hold it, I'm talking about initial. So watch the charts for the first week. That's probably when most of the charts are going to take gains that we're looking at. We covered three stocks. I didn't cover all the information. So go do some more DD. Convince yourself they're worthy of investing in. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.